Hello and welcome to another Healing the Child Within. I'm really excited about today's um, message because today's message is about why you can't have it all. And let me tell you, this is probably going to be one of the most positive messages you ever hear. What? Doesn't that sound kind of productive to when I tell you you can't have something to telling you that this is going to be really positive? But I promise you it is. This is a very positive message because I want you to think about something. We can never have it all, right? We set a goal and we say, I want that. And then we get that. And then it's human nature. We want more. And that's not being greedy, but this is where we go back to our child self. Because if something from your childhood experiences created a belief in you that you should not ask for more or that you should be satisfied with what you have, be grateful for what you have, um, you know, then it can be very difficult in our adult meanderings and going on in our adult life to think, wow, this is awesome. I have all of this. Now I want more. And if you remember, there were a couple of weeks ago, a couple of sessions ago, um, I mentioned that I saw this movie and in the movie, one of the most awesome lines where these people were doing a toast and the guy said, here's to having it all and wanting more. And I thought, brilliant, that is so brilliant. And I've been thinking a lot about that. And isn't it true though, that we, um, many of us were taught as children or intuited that we should be grateful for what we have, be happy for what you have. Don't ask for more. There are other people who don't have as much as you, so you shouldn't ask for more. But the thing is, we are 100% energy. Remember that, we are energy. And energy is continuously expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. So when your energy is contracting, meaning being in a place where you don't think you want to be, because Remember, there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. There's just us sitting around thinking, oh man, why is this happening to me again? I don't get it. And we're so busy whining and wondering why something isn't happening that we're forgetting to be really, really excited about what is. Even contrast, even that, you know, when something is coming in and you feel so small and tight around you, like you don't have enough. But the thing is, remember, we have to know what we don't want before we can know what we do want. We have to know contrast to know how wonderful everything is. So here's an example. If you're, if you're, if you're like scratching your head going, what? what are you talking about, Nancy? Here's a great example. So when I was in my 20s, of course, here's what I wanted. To me, having it all was being a really great mom to my two beautiful daughters and being able to keep them comfortable and take care of their needs. To me, that was having it all. But you know, as they grew, grew older and grew up, then my needs, my wants for what I wanted started to expand. Now, one could say, hey, you know, you have two beautiful daughters, they're healthy, everything's perfect in your life. Why would you want more? Why would you want to expand? But again, that's human nature, right? Because I am no good to anyone else if I am not expanding. Because if I'm not expanding, then there's something in me that's going, hmm, I don't know, something feels off. I just wish that I could, you know, and then you fill in the blank. And then when my daughters grew up and moved out of the house and started their own lives, again, now this is more time for me to expand. Now you think about, divorce. I had, a, I went through a divorce. You could think of that as contracting. All the things that I experienced during divorce were certainly things that I thought, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. But out of that came the expansion. So you see, we're continually contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding. And then what was next for me, right? When my business started taking off, when I started making money and the money started rolling in for my business, I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Well, don't you know, I wanted more. Absolutely. I wanted to put that money into my business. I wanted different kinds of technology. I wanted different equipment. So again, expanding, 
loving what you have, being grateful for what you have and allowing it to expand. That is so important. And then of course, I wanted my perfect home. I had it in my mind, what I wanted. It was on my vision board. I wanted a place with a lot of windows to let in the beautiful sunlight. I wanted a place by the water. I wanted a flower garden. I wanted hardwood floors. You know, all of these things that I had on my want list, this is what I want manifested to me in a big way. And then when my perfect home came to me, when, it, when I manifested it, well, don't you know, I wanted more, yes because I wanted furniture and I wanted dishes and pots and pans and flowers for my flower garden and a patio table. And you see, I kept expanding. So this is why you can never have it all because even when you get what you want, you're going to want more. Now, here's where we wanna think about this. When you do have what you want, what is your uh, inner child saying to you about asking for more? Is your inner child saying, oh gosh, you should just be happy where you are. You know, there, there's, there are people out there who don't have near what you have. How can you be unhappy and want more? Well, there's a big difference between wanting more because you're unhappy with what you have and wanting more because you're so grateful for what you have. Ah, the universe loves gratitude, right? Of course, the universe loves everything. We know that, right? There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. Whatever we're sending out to the universe is what the universe joyfully brings back to us. So if we're sending out negativity and we're sitting in a space of lack, I don't have, I can't have, I, I, I don't know how. Um, if we're sitting in that space, then of course, the universe is going to say, oh, all right, your wish is my command and send that back to us. So we will experience more lack, more I can't haves, more I don't knows. But when you are sitting in gratitude and you're thinking, whoa, this is, this is crazy fantastic, man. Crazy. Thank you. Thank you for my home. Now, what are we going to do about furnishing it? What are we going to do about getting some dishes? What are we going to, you see what I'm saying? So what is it in your life that you want? And when you get it, you want more. And how do you feel about that? What is your self-talk around that? Or is there some little part of you, you know, in your self-talk, which is your inner child, of course, because that's where we created all of our beliefs in childhood between the ages of birth to about eight to 13 years of age. So we created those beliefs and we hold on to them and we bring them with us into our adult self. And our adult self is walking around making choices based on beliefs that we created in childhood. And until someone suggests to you or you get the message, you know what? You have the ability to question those beliefs. You don't have to hold fast and true to everything that you believed yesterday and the day before and the day before, you can let it go. You can question those beliefs. You can master those beliefs. That's why I'm so excited about sharing with people how to master your beliefs because we don't master our beliefs when if we don't know that it's even possible, right? We, if someone says to you, why do you believe what you believe? You would say, well, because that's what I've always believed. Now, I love this because I was sharing this example with my mom one day. I said, mom, you absolutely believe that one plus one is two, correct? And she thought about it and she thought about it. And she's like, yes, one plus one is two. And I said, hmm, can I help you master that belief? And she said, well, I don't know how you're gonna do that because one plus one is two. And I said, all right, now let's think about something. If you have a glass of water and you have another glass of water, half a glass each, and then you take this glass and you pour it in this glass. Now you have one plus one still equals one, right? Right. So there are variants of what we believe. We can expand in our beliefs. She expanded in her belief about what one plus one equals. And this is what you can do. You can expand in everything that you have. So if you have a wonderful relationship 
with your parents, your children, your coworkers, those people in your life, and you love it and you feel so blessed, you can expand on that. Oh, thank you, universe. Thank you for these beautiful relationships. Bring me more. This feels so good to me. I love the reciprocity between the people in my life and myself. What about your finances? Where are you? Doesn't matter if you have $1 in your wallet. You can be so happy and grateful and thankful for that $1. You can say, oh, thank you. And then sit and think about all the things that you can do with $1. Now, of course, if you're gonna be cranky pants and say, Nancy, where have you been? You can't buy anything with a dollar. Oh, not true. So think about that. Just think about what $1 could do for many people who don't have that $1. And then when you start thinking about that, notice your feelings and emotions around that. Notice how good it starts to feel like, well, I could do this and I could do that and I could do this. And then you start to grow and grow. Remember, we're expanding. And when your energy expands around what you can do with the money you have, more money will come to you. It will. It happens that way. Same way with your health. If there's something that you're not happy with in your health and you're thinking, oh man, this just isn't going well. I don't know why this is happening and this is happening. Think about when you felt your healthiest. Just sit and think about that. And close your eyes and imagine, take yourself back to what you used to do when you were at your most healthy self. Now, how does that feel? Really play this game because if you're not going to play 100%, the universe is like, okay, you know, I'm going to give you what you put into it. But if you're not going to play 100%, I'm not sure. We're just going to kind of wait and see what you want. So play 100%, really play the game and ask yourself, oh yeah, I remember this is what it felt like and I did this and this and go with it and feel it until it's vibrating from you. The universe has no choice but to bring you what you're putting out there. But if you're not feeling in the best of health and you're concentrating on all of your um, woes and your aches and your pains, of course, then the universe has no choice but to send you back more of that. Do you get to see how, do you begin to see how powerful you are? You are the creator of your life. You are the manifester of everything in your life. And even if you think something's going on right now that you wish was not happening, how can you look at it and say, okay, this doesn't feel like exactly what I would ask for. Uh, so how can you be grateful for that? How can I be grateful for that? When you're in it, it's, it's difficult. I would be the first one to step up and say, yeah, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, gave the t-shirt away, truly. Because when you're in what feels like the midst of it, or maybe in a dark night of the soul, Everything around you seems to be happening like with what you don't want. But again, this is where it's so important for you to put this into practice. Remember, this work is practice. Life is practice. And practice is something that you do day in and day out and day in and day out. The more you practice and how you practice is how your efforts will be. If you want to play the piano and you just practice once a year, probably not going to be such a great piano player. But if you put hours and hours a day into it every day of the week, you're probably going to do quite well with your piano playing. It's the same with everything. Life is a practice. And this is why you continue to get better and better and create more and expand based on what you do. So if you're constantly contracting and expanding, ask yourself, am I in, the, in a place of ex expanding right now? Or am I in a place of contraction? And if you feel that you're in a place of contraction, here's a question you can ask yourself. Do I want to stay here? Is this where I want to be? And if your answer is, heck no, man. All right, then. Where do you want to be? This goes back to your want, don't want list. Yes? Yes. Remember, your want, don't want list. Take a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle. 
on the left, write what you don't want, and on the right, what, what, write what you do want. So for example, in the first one, let's say you're dating and you want to date a non-smoker. So on the left, you would put, I do not want to date someone who smokes. And on the right, right across from it, you put, I want to date a non-smoker. And you have an opposite of every single thing. Everything that you feel is the opposite of what you really want to experience right now. Put it on your don't want side. And then when you're finished, you fold that paper in half and you concentrate on everything that's on your want side. And don't just go through it like willy nilly, like, okay, yep, 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 yep. You wanna stop and you want to feel everything because if you really want this, If you really want this, you've got to play the game, right? You've got to look at your list and you've got to say, oh yeah, I want that. And then close your eyes and then think about you having it. Do do that exercise in your mind like, oh yeah, this, this is what that feels like. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, this could have come at any time and I would be so happy. And it's coming now and I'm so grateful for it. Yes, this feels wonderful. To you're having like that vibrational orgasm, which is so wonderful because you're so excited for where you are, for what you're manifesting. And you know that what you are thinking about is possible because if it wasn't possible for you, you wouldn't even be able to be thinking about it. It's true. Think about it. When your soul decided to incarnate, your soul comes from complete and 100% love and light. Your soul did not say, you know, I think I'm going to incarnate and I'm going to try. I'm just going to try. No, that's not what your soul said. Your soul said, I am going to incarnate into human form. And I know that everything I want will be at my disposal. I also know that there is going to be a period where I might forget this, but there are going to be a, there are going to be plenty of people around me. There are going to be plenty of experiences. There are going to be plenty of opportunities to remind me of the love and the light that I am. And this is what you want to look for every single day. Look for those opportunities. Look for those experiences because they're everywhere. They're in a song. They're in a baby smile. They're in the plants. They're in the hummingbird that took my attention last week during our show. Um, it's, it's like so amazing. You know, I was sitting outside the other day and I've seen hummingbirds before, but this guy, man, you know, he's in my yard, he's in my garden. And he was like hovering right here in front of me for like seconds at a time. Then he would fly away and then he would come back. And I thought, isn't this so amazing? So of course I came in and I looked it up. I Googled it. What is the spiritual meaning of the hummingbird paying so much attention to you? And it's about taking time to look around and be grateful for what you have. Look at everything that has been brought into your life. And it was such a wonderful moment for me. I actually walked outside and said, thanks, honey. That's what I call him. And it's so wonderful because these signs, these gifts are around us everywhere, everywhere, all the time. We know the only thing we need to do And I rarely say need, right? Because we don't need to do anything. But should we want this, we are being given the opportunity to be still. Be still. What do you see around you? What lights you up? What makes you feel so abundant? And how can you sit in gratitude for that and expand and get more, receive more? because you can do this. That's what we are here for. We are here to manifest. Now we can manifest positively and we can manifest negatively. The choice is ours. But the thing is, we are manifesting it. Make no mistake, we are manifesting it. And when something comes into your awareness or your experience where you think, I don't want that. I didn't ask for that. Oh, wait a minute here. Yes. Here's what happened. I remember I drew that to me so that I would be very, very clear on what I don't want. And then I'm going to flip it around and be very, very thankful that what I do want is available to me. It's already on its way. How do I know that? Because I could not experience its opposite 
if the opposite were not true, if the opposite were not there. So when there's something that you really, really want in your life, what is your self-talk? Pay attention to what your inner child is sharing with you. This is where the power comes from. When you are able to sit and be in this space of reflection and know, am I in resistance? And if the answer is yes, is it because of a belief, something my inner child took on as truth that I have been making all my choices against and for and about because I have not been able to master that belief. I have not been able to let go or heal that belief or I have not been able to give myself the opportunity to pay attention to the feelings and emotions that are attached to that belief. Because every belief that we have, we have feelings and emotions attached to them. Now, remember, feeling, emotion, energy, vibration, these are laws of the universe. This is a universal law. So what you're feeling, where you're vibrating, that's what you're putting out. And that's what you are drawing back to you. So let's ask this question. What can you stop and just point at right this minute, point at one thing in your vision and say, oh, oh my gosh, I am so grateful for that. And then ask yourself, how can I have more? How can I have more? And it's not necessarily more of um, a possession or a material thing. It's more of how that, how you feel when you look at that particular thing. How does that make you feel? Where are you on this? Think about it as a scale of zero to a 10 to zero and then zero to 10. The 10 to zero is the negative side. The zero to 10 is the positive side. Where are you at any given time on this scale? Because there's no right or wrong about this. If you're feeling more on the negative side, you're in the negative numbers and you're not feeling so, so great, so positive, and maybe you're having a doldrum day, stop and look around and just pick out one thing, one thing. And this can also be something from your happy list. Maybe it's not something in your vision right now, but I also share over and over, create a happy list. You know, you should have at least a hundred things, 200 things on your happy list. Think about things that you absolutely enjoy, things that make you happy. Like one of the things on my happy list is thinking about iced tea with a lot of ice. That makes me really happy. It does. It does. And I, I love thinking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to have a sandwich with a glass of iced tea. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of ice in that. And then I start to realize how I feel about that. And it's like, whoa, this feels pretty great. And so it's not about the tea. It's about how I feel about the tea, right? Now, if someone were to say to me, oh, I'm going to give you some iced coffee. Mm, nope, that wouldn't do it for me because I'm not a coffee drinker. So this is very important for you to know what you want, what you like, what you don't like. And write these things down, put this into practice, know what you want. If you have a terrible, rotten, no good day at work, pay attention at the end of the day as you're reflecting, stop and think about what do you believe created that terrible, horrible, no good day? What do you believe? And then how do you feel about it? Reflect on that. And then when you get to that part of knowing what you believe happened that turned it all south for you, now here's what you want to do, right? You want to grab onto something that's going to increase your positivity level, help you to expand. It could be something on your happy list. It could be something in your line of vision. You want to expand. So when I moved into my home and I was thinking, oh, you know what would look nice right there? Now, of course, I could have stopped and said, you know what? Nothing is ne needed, right? Everything is perfect exactly the way it is. And that's absolutely true. Everything is perfect. I got the home I wanted and everything is perfect. 
but we can always add to it, right? Maybe you get the perfect couch that you like and you think, you know, I saw some throw pillows that would look really well there. I'm going to go out and get those throw pillows and add them to the couch. You know, it's not just about the material possession. It's not just putting those pillows on the couch. It's about how it makes you feel to stand back and look at that and go, gosh, that just looks so perfect. I put some purple flowers on my dining room table and I absolutely love them. You know, I'm all about purple. Time to party like purple when you're with me. And I look at these flowers and they're in front of my window that overlooks my lake, not my lake, but a lake. And I love in the afternoon, the way the sunlight sparkles off the water and it looks like a millions and millions of diamonds sparkling on top of the water. And I think, oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful view. I am so very grateful for this. And I take the time to sit and reflect and be grateful, feel gratitude. And then I expand from there. So this is what I mean when I say you can't have it all. Because once you get to what you think the all was, it's human nature, you're going to want more, right? Once you have the couch, then you want the throw pillows. Then you have the throw pillows and then you think, hmm, maybe a rug would look nice there. Oh, and you know what? Now I've got to paint that wall behind there. Oh, you know what? A picture would be perfect there. Do you see, we're always thinking, we're always growing, we're always expanding. But the important thing is to pay attention to, are we growing and expanding in a positive way? Or are we growing and expanding out of negativity? Are we looking around and saying, I don't want this, I don't want that, this makes me unhappy, this, this tweaks me off, I, I, this, ugh, this is not going the way I want. And are we staying in that vibration? Are we concentrating on that? Or are we giving ourselves the opportunity to manifest from joy, from abundance? This is why healing your inner child leads to creating abundance experiencing abundance, prosperity, joy, happiness. Because what your adult self is doing is reconnecting with your child self. You're absolutely giving yourself that opportunity to say, hey, Nancy, you know, I remember there was a time when we believed this, but you know what? Now my adult self has experienced some more things. And you can see that that doesn't hold water anymore. And you have this conversation with your inner child. Give your inner child permission to reconnect with you. Reconnect with your inner child and heal those experiences that are holding you back, that are mm, creating that belief that you need to stay where you are, that you have enough, that it's not right to ask for more, or to wonder why you feel dissatisfied when you get something that you really wanted. You know, this comes to play too when we think about retail therapy, right? Because people go out and they think, oh, I'll buy this or I'll buy that. And they're happy in the moment maybe, but then afterwards they've got buyer's remorse or financial remorse and you're thinking about all of this. So think about what is it that I want to feel? And then when you're telling yourself, the only way I can feel that is if I have that. Instead, Think about the fact that you already have it. Think about what having it feels like and expand from there and watch how the universe will bring you more. If you want to know more about this stuff, if you want to know about expansion and contraction and healing your inner child and healing those negative experiences from your childhood, I encourage you to visit me at masteringyourbeliefs.com. Get your free download, download the um, Healing the Child Within book. It's an audio book with a 46 page workbook. We've got some stuff there for you. And you have the ability, the opportunity, the wherewithal, the power to manifest whatever you want to manifest. It's yours for the asking. Ask, receive, give gratitude. Ask for more, ask for more, expand and know that you deserve to have everything your heart desires. In the meantime, this is Nancy Muller, the one and only Life Sensei, saying ciao for now. <laughs>